Hello everybody, I'm Quinns and some of you might know me from working for RPS a few years ago, writing articles about being bad at Dwarf Fortress or being bad at Mountain Blade before I was fired for being bad at games. The important thing is I'm back and I've got a whole new series where every episode I'll be talking about just one mechanic in one game. Because mechanics are important, man. Without them we'd be standing, you'd be in a field, but you would there'd be no one there. And, you know, maybe there'd be a ball, but... You couldn't touch it, or if you did, then I don't know where I'm going with this. Let's just get started. Crypt of the Necrodancer is a rhythm roguelike set to emerge from the electric egg of early access as a complete game any day now, though it's a great incomplete game right now. Play takes you through dungeon levels and different worlds, you collect new gear and deadly magic, you fight bosses, but you do it all to the beat of an amazing chiptune soundtrack. It has local multiplayer, you can use your own MP3s, it even has a special mode for playing with a USB dance pad, but today we're just gonna talk about what moving in time to music does for this game because it's super interesting. Let me outline exactly how this works. Monsters and you all move during each beat of the soundtrack. This is gonna seem ungodly slow when you're grooving down corridors, but ungodly fast when you're in a room full of monsters. You're going to want to pause. This is what you'd see in a normal roguelike, and you'd stroke your chin and figure out your optimal play, and oh, remember, you haven't written to your mother today, but you can't do that in Crypt of the Necrodancer. You can't even stand still. As this ends the combo you've earned by killing monsters, and your combo gets you gold, you use it the merchant, so you end up nervously hopping from foot to foot when you need to think. Now, of course, this makes the game tense. It just like that became a real-time strategy game, but we're just getting started. Every monster in this game actually moves to a very simple pattern. Blue blobs hop back and forth, the golem moves every fourth beat, dogs move every other beat, but diagonally, and so on. So to defeat every monster, you have to move in step with them, or dance with them. This means Necrodancer taps into the same part of your brain that is pleased by structured dance, and hear me out. What I mean is that you're put under pressure to perform a very simple act, but receive instantaneous feedback that you did the right thing in that moment, which is actually rare for games in general and creates a mix of relief and excitement as you perfect, 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 perfect for your way through a room. It's also rare for a puzzle game to dangle the possibility of flawless play in front of everybody, like a sausage on a string is a real achievable goal. Which isn't to say that Necrodance is just a game of memorization. You see, this is key. You always know what you have to do. It's just a case of thinking fast enough. And there's also resource management and destructible terrain, and one of the bosses is a bloody chessboard, which is so clever it makes me feel a bit sick when I think about it. Uh, so we've got a game with great positive reinforcement. The other thing the Youth of Rhythm does in Necrodancer, and this is my favorite thing, is that it coaxes you into making bad decisions. You see, even in real-time strategy games, if you have a tricky choice to make, your time is still elastic enough that you can make the call when you're ready. In Necrodancer, you have to make decisions immediately. Now, 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 which means you are constantly making the wrong call. You only ever get hit when you literally walk into the path of an attack, and personally, when I use a spell, I'm immediately filled with regret in this, ah, I should have saved that. You see, just as the game's combat is constantly telling you that you did the right thing, which is great design, when you fail, you immediately know it was your fault, you idiot, which is, again, a good thing. You see, strategy games in general extend their lifespan by presenting a puzzle that's extremely opaque, where it's hard to see how to succeed. And real-time strategy combines this uh, school of design with you needing to move as fast as possible as well. And all of that's okay. I love me some real-time strategy, but it often leads to a fail state where you don't know what you did wrong. In instead presenting a series of incredibly simple puzzles that you have to complete to a timer, Necrodancer evades this frustration. You always know exactly where you went wrong. You walked into a dragon. Why did you keep walking into a dragon? You won't know why you did it, but still, that's a much quicker path to forgiveness than a game that's kicking your ass and you don't really know why. So there you have it, Necrodancer's rhythm isn't just a clever gimmick. In addition to making your failures more bearable, it allows you to feel clever, to feel perfect, which is a fantastic and disappointingly rare thing for a game to achieve. Think about all those hours you spend playing Civilization or Starcraft, you don't ever really feel clever, do you? I mean, sure, you feel a mastery over a system, but that's not something you can take away with you when you leave that video game.
Thanks for watching everybody. Although in closing, there are a couple more things I have to talk about because I have to talk about them every time I talk about Crypto the Necrodancer because they're just my favorite things ever. Appendix A. The merchant sings when you get close to him. Isn't that cute? Look, listen to him singing along to the chiptune soundtrack. That's gonna put a smile on everyone's face. But you know what else it's gonna do? It's gonna make the game richer. You see, because you might be low on health and then you can hunt him down and his healing items by following his voice. They've made the game more deep without being any more complicated. Mmm, tastes like good design. Appendix B. On the Fire and Ice world, the music changes from heavy metal to electro as you move over to the ice. Oh, listen to that. Listen, listen. Oh, oh, that's, oh, that's so good. Holy sh**, that's the good stuff. See you next time, everybody. I'm actually just playing the game now. <laughs>